Hello, shalom everyone. I'm not having a class. I just want to give a very quick um I want to share something. Yeah. It's very important actually for me testimony of how God is good today. He's been so good every day actually. But day after day he has been doing things for us like out of our expectations, right? But of course, yeah, today is Sunday here. But I was not able to go to, or I was not able to attend church for some reasons. Yeah, because last night I experienced dysmenorrhea because of my monthly period. I had stomach cramp. It was very painful last night. I was, yeah, I was not able to sleep earlier. I sleep late as a though i had i'd set my alarm 7 30 a.m it actually i i heard it alarm but uh, i don't want to wake up i was too sleepy yet because i sleep like late i think that's already two o'clock 1 a.m or two o'clock i i so 7 30 i still want to sleep so i was like negotiating to god lord I want to go to church, but today, can I make it? My body is so tired. It's still, I still have this pain. Like, can I just sleep more and I can just have a second surface? So actually, God told me, oh, yeah, sure, you can. I will let you sleep. So I really know in my spirit that God will, be, God will talk to me. I knew it. Um, how do God talk to you? How do you talk to God? In my case, He talks to me through dreams, through His Word by reading the Bible, through situations. But yeah, this time He talked to me in the dream. So I want to share my dream. Yeah, actually, after I, after the alarm, because it was off. I I don't know. Maybe my sister turned it off, or just it turned off by itself. But my sister didn't wake me up so it was so good i sleep again like very deep sleep i have a very long sleep and have a very good dream so in my dream i saw myself in um, my hometown in my grandmother's house so in my grandmother's house we had foreign visitors including isaiah saldivar <laughs> so there were also three american women and and it's sunday so, Isaiah Saldivar was busy preparing for Sunday service. Actually, I was so busy too. Um, for some things, I was so busy like Martha. And because I was so busy, I was not able to go to church. <laughs> Unfortunately, they already went to church and without me. And this American woman, she went back. It was like, oh, I already went to church and I, I don't want you to miss it. Uh, let's go back. Uh, I mean, we can have the second service. So I was like, oh, really? Okay. So I was doing, I was washing the dishes. And she was very um, concerned about me. And she knew because she had this, uh, she has this gift of discernment. She knew I was feeling unwell. So she listened to me. She didn't ask me, but she just listened to me. It just happened that um, I shared to her, I confessed some things deep inside of me. But maybe there are things that I, I didn't actually share to different people. But he's, she's a stranger, but she's a sister in Christ. And I was very comfortable sharing something to her. And, and I said, and she said, uh, yeah, it's good to go to church to have a fellowship. And I said, yeah, you're right. Actually, it's good to go to church. Actually, it's good to go to church to listen to a sermon, you know, to be blessed by the word of God. But you can actually do that also in the house. You can open your TV in youtube you can watch different sermons from different pastors that you know televangelists 
But it's really different, right? If you go to church and have fellowship. So aside from go from aside from listening to the sermon, one thing that a believer really needs a believer really needs is fellowship. That's what uh most of us lack are lacking. We're lacking um we lack fellowship with one another. Right? So I actually shared to her my trauma, like I was been uh, abused in the church that I I used to go. So because of that, I avoided to have fellowship with. With I avoid to go to fellowship because of that fear. You know, I don't want to really give up, elaborate, but that's it. That's it. And God is so interested. God is very concerned about our whereabouts. God is interested with the state of our hearts, of our soul, of our spirit. Yeah. So actually, I was praying to God, Lord, please remove this pain. Last night, it is last. Please remove this pain. It's very painful. Like, it's not just my stomach, it's also my lower back. Like, uh, why? And God showed me, like, it's not actually that your problem is not rooted in the, in stress or fatigue. It's the condition of your soul. It's a condition of your spirit. Yeah. There is a deep root cause of your pain. And that is, and that is the thing that I I want you to surrender to me. Yeah. So I surrendered like, yeah, you're right. So the next part of my dream I want to share is um, we're talking. We're talking actually in the house. And I noticed there is this pool, like little containers, little containers of water that Isaiah Saldivar uh, collected like I wonder why did Isaiah Saldivar collected water when we don't we, actually there's no announcement of water interruption and the water is you know we have a lot of water from the tap we have plenty of water from the tap actually and so I realized that it was the water that he collected from his bed room there's a leak on the wall has a leak <laughs> so he collected the water and put it in the, those containers that i was surprised what it looks clean actually and uh i was actually i thought it's clean that's why i drink from it <laughs> and they they told me oh it's dirty so maybe the wisdom of that dream about that water is you cannot really decide you cannot judge anything you see with your naked eyes if they are really um pure or clean or good for your body good for your source your spirit yeah because not everything which looks good which looks clean which looks um pure are really pure <laughs> or clean or safe like that and also the wall what is the significant of the wall the wall is our strength right is our stronghold is our defense so if our if the wall of our house has leak and it's dangerous right if there's an earthquake the house will collapse if there is leaks the water can get in if there is a strong rain the water can get in so that will be uncomfortable for the people living in the house so that's also the same with our spiritual aspect. So if what is our wall? Our it's our faith, right? If our faith has leak or has mixture, is not pure, is not that strong. So one strike from external force it will crumble us, right? It will collapse. Yeah. We'll be confused eventually i hope you get something good from my dream 
actually. <laughs> I'm trying to elaborate it. And uh, finally, uh, I, I really thank God for, you know, saving me <laughs> from from the burden that I've been carrying this week, actually. I thought I'm okay, but God showed me that I'm not okay. I have to surrender those things, even the, lo the little things that I thought that it's okay, I can carry it by myself. I'm okay, God, like that. But no, God is very interested in us surrendering everything to Him. He wants to surrender everything to Him. He wants us to surrender everything in us, including those burdens to Him. Yeah, fellowship is really important in the body of Christ. You cannot, you cannot grow alone. You need somebody, you need people around you to help you grow as well. Thank you so much. I realized that uh, we don't actually need to go to church regularly. I, I, I don't actually encourage everyone to go to church less than needed. But if you go to church no man, already, and that's kind of dragging your feet and you don't have joy doing it, then don't go. Today, it's very beautiful. God talked to me and God removed something from me, like heaviness. And then in my dream, after I cried, God made me sing. <laughs> I had a new tongue, I spoke in tongue, and then God made me sing. It was so beautiful. And yeah, He removed the pain. And He told me that I will renew you, that you will have what I designed be bright to be. And I felt brand new. What is the spiritual significance of my dream? It is to teach us to not trust on what we see with our naked eye. Sometimes we just judge things on what or how we see things and judge us on the outside, but God sees the heart. What is the foundation of our soul and spirit if they are not strong? What do I learn today from my dream? is to embrace the reality. I need to be present. I need to learn from my mistakes. I need to grow for every failed relationship, for example. I need to learn from it and grow. If you're not learning, you're not growing. And you will repeat the same mistakes over and over again. And that's a tragedy. Actually, God is really interested in our whereabouts, right? He's interested in whatever we do. He's interested in whatever, how we spend our time, who we spend our time with. Like, these days, I was really thinking about people in the social media. I was concerned about them. Like, these people, especially those atheists, those people who have been posting negative or toxic, hateful comments, Actually, I I understand them. I can feel their pain. Like they just need um, a platform to para ma ilabas nila yung kanilang mga saloob, pain inside. Actually, they don't have the anger towards the government. Their anger is rooted from their pain deep inside, their emptiness, wanting to belong, wanting to be validated, wanting to be accepted. The identity crisis among people especially who are so active in social media. So if you don't have the chance to socialize with real people physically, you know, you go, you become very active in social media, which is not balance. You need balance. If you are too active in social media, then in you know reality, outside social media, then there's something wrong. Let's talk more about fellowship. Why do we need fellowship in the church? Because the church is a family. It's a home where we belong, virtual home. So if you just go to church just to listen to preaching or a sermon uh, without fellowship, then there's lacking. There's lacking, really. Been, so if you've been attending church and you don't fellowship with your fellow believers, then you have to do it. Yeah, it's really good to talk to a fellow believer, to share something, then listen to you. You can talk to them. You can listen to them too and share your burden and you feel like you know that's that's the role of the church right and it's so, it's so good that god really talks to us in many different ways and he
Tony is very interested in the condition of our hearts, in the condition of our soul, in our spirit. So we thought that we are busy, 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 we're stressed out, and we're okay, like we can handle it, but actually God knows our capabilities, <laughs> our limitations, and God sees actually, God saw it, that oh, my daughter, we just thought that you're okay, but actually you're not. Just surrender your burdens to me. And actually, he taught me. He told me that in my dream. Oh, Lord, what do you want? What do you want me to, to do? Just surrender. He said, just surrender. And I just prayed and I just worshiped. It's so beautiful. I didn't. I I couldn't stop worshiping him while I'm just laying on my bed. And I was like. Ugh. My dream came true because in my dream I I was worshiping God I was singing but when I wake up I did the same thing I worship I like sang it was so beautiful God removed something in me the thorn the heaviness you know I was I had trauma I had a trauma from the pain like the abuse from the church that I had like oh, why would I have to carry it all through these years just let it go that is really good you know it's doing something far better than I was planning I was planning to do this and do that but God has different plan for me